Tonight, the life and legacy of Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest serving monarch dies at the age of 96. The Queen passed peacefully at her Balmoral Castle in Scotland. The official announcement from Buckingham Palace. Her family rushing to be by her side, including her son, the new King Charles. CBS's Charlie Daggett is at Buckingham Palace as thousands gather to mourn. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. The unlikely queen, from a 19-year-old auto mechanic during World War II to her 70-year reign. CBS's Mark Phillips has her amazing life story. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. The global reaction. Condolences pour in from leaders around the world and her iconic encounters with American presidents, first as princess, then as queen, dancing and riding through 70 years of history. And finally, the queen's legacy. We talked to former prime minister, John Major, and we look back at her life, not just as monarch, but mother, her devotion to her family. This is the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell, reporting from the nation's capital. Good evening to our viewers in the West, and thank you for joining us on this historic Thursday night. The world is mourning Queen Elizabeth II, who died this afternoon at age 96, surrounded by family at her summer home in Scotland. Earlier in the day, Buckingham Palace announced that Her Majesty, who ruled over the Commonwealth for a record 70 years, was placed under medical supervision. Her doctors were concerned about her health. Family rushed to her side. In accordance with the royal line of succession, her oldest son, Charles, immediately became king, which puts her grandson, Prince William, next in line to the throne, followed by William's eldest son, nine-year-old Prince George. Just before her death was announced, a double rainbow appeared over Buckingham Palace as a crowd gathered. President Biden visited the British Embassy in Washington late today and left a message in a condolence book. In a statement, he said Queen Elizabeth was a stateswoman of unmatched dignity and constancy who deepened the bedrock alliance between the United Kingdom and the United States. We have a team of reporters covering the death of a queen described as a stalwart leader. And CBS's Charlie Daggett will start us off from Buckingham Palace. And good evening, Charlie. What's the scene like there? Okay. Good evening to you, Nora. There has been an outpouring of grief and emotion here at Buckingham Palace. Thousands of people have gathered to pay tribute despite the rain. And although this is a moment that we've all been expecting, it's hard to imagine this country without her. The official notice hung on the gates of Buckingham Palace in accordance with royal protocol. The Queen died peacefully in Balmoral this afternoon. Senior members of the royal family raced to be at her bedside today at Balmoral Castle, her summer home in Scotland. Prince Charles, now King Charles, was already there. Her grandson, Prince William, who came without Kate, and the Queen's other children made their way to the royal residence. Prince Harry traveled by himself and came later. Meghan remained behind in London. On the Queen's death, His Majesty, King Charles III, issued the statement, We mourn profoundly the passing of a cherished sovereign and a much-loved mother. The new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, said the country is devastated. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. The Queen was last pictured meeting with the Prime Minister on Tuesday and standing on her own, smiling by the fire, cane in hand. The 96-year-old monarch was hospitalized last October, suffering from what the palace called episodic mobility problems, forced to cut back on most public engagements since. Only appearing at a few of the events during her platinum jubilee, marking 70 years on the throne. She has slowed down considerably, appearing more frail in recent weeks with a significant weight loss. And the death of Prince Philip in April last year, her husband of more than 70 years, paid reminder that her reign was moving into its final, inevitable chapter. Tonight, the country mourns not just the passing of a national figure, but part of its very identity, the only monarch most have ever known. 
Now, the Queen is expected to remain in Scotland through the weekend before she's brought down here. King Charles will make his first televised address tomorrow and finalize the plans for his mother's funeral. Nora. Charlie Daggett outside Buckingham Palace. Thank you. The 70-year reign of Queen Elizabeth has come during an ever-changing world through peace and prosperity, wars and financial hardships. Through it all, the Queen remained forever devoted to the British people. CBS's Mark Phillips has her incredible life story. For a woman who was not born to be queen, the public outpouring of affection for Elizabeth during the celebration of her 70th year on the throne was a tribute to her and to how well she had done her job. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor, Queen Elizabeth II, reinvented the British monarchy and may have saved it. Elizabeth was already 10 years old when another royal drama led to her becoming heir to the throne. In 1936, her uncle, Edward VIII, abdicated to marry the American divorcee Wallace Simpson, and the royal line shifted to her father, George VI, and so to her. The young Princess Elizabeth was already a public favorite. I am sure that you are often thinking of the old country. During the Second World War, she had worked to raise the country's morale. To make the world of tomorrow a better and happier place. And she had also served as a volunteer in the war effort. Her marriage to Philip Mountbatten, an anglicized member of the deposed Greek royal family, gave a war-weary country something to celebrate. And the children the marriage produced, first Charles and then Anne, secured the future. Elizabeth's coronation in 1953 was the first ever to be televised, and it began a reign with a singular purpose. My whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. But the royal ride was sometimes bumpy. The stability and continuity the monarchy was supposed to provide began to look shaky as one by one the royal marriages broke down around her, her sister Margaret's, her daughter Anne's, her son Andrew's. They all ended in awkward divorces. None was uglier than the breakup of Prince Charles and Diana Spencer. The long public unraveling of the marriage of the heir to the throne seemed to shake the very foundations of the royal household. And if that household ever came close to teetering, it was in the period following the shocking death of Diana in that Paris car crash the national outpouring of grief seemed to highlight the emotional gap between the queen and her people. Elizabeth did much to repair the damage with a single bow of the head to the passing coffin of a popular princess. There would be other challenges, one of the most serious centering around the wife of one of Diana's sons. When Prince Harry's biracial American wife, Meghan Markle, complained of mistreatment by palace officials, the couple renounced the royal life and moved to California. When Elizabeth's husband, Prince Philip, died, she was left alone. In seven decades on the throne, Elizabeth redefined the monarchy, remade it for a more modern, less deferential age. And in the process, she became not just the Queen of Great Britain, she became, in a way, Queen of the World. Mark Phillips, CBS News, London. The Queen's extraordinary global impact can be seen in the heartfelt messages from world leaders to ordinary people who felt a deep connection to the beloved monarch. CBS's Holly Williams is at Windsor Castle tonight, just outside London, where crowds have gathered to express their grief. As the Union Jack was lowered in London and all over the United Kingdom, crowds began to gather at the golden gates of Buckingham Palace. God save the Queen, they sang, for a much-loved monarch. We were outside Windsor Castle tonight, home to kings and queens for over 900 years. <laughs> she was everything to us, and it was a massive part of our upbringing. It's a very sad moment, a very sad moment. She's always been there, and it will never be the same again. <laughs> what kind of a queen was she to your mind? To me, I believe that she was a queen uh, with a lot of love for her people. 
tal? Muy buenas tardes. Bienvenidos a este especial. Around the globe today, news broadcasts reported the unfolding events. TV consacré a ce qui se passe. Raining from this small island, Queen Elizabeth was perhaps the most famous woman in the world. World leaders paid tribute. She was one of my favorite people in the world, and I will miss her so. President Emmanuel Macron of France said she embodied British unity. President Vladimir Zelensky, leader of embattled Ukraine, said the Queen's death was an irreparable loss. And Pope Francis offered prayers for her eternal rest. This truly is the end of an era. For over 70 years, the United Kingdom's national anthem has been God Save the Queen. Now it will become God Save the King. Nora. Holly Williams outside Windsor Castle, thank you. Moments ago, we spoke with former Prime Minister Sir John Major, who served in office from 1990 to 1997. He was one of the first to pay tribute to the Queen today, pay, saying that in her public duty, she was selfless and wise with a wonderful generosity of spirit. That is how she lived and how she led. And the Prime Minister told us those traits were especially apparent during difficult times. One of the many gifts the Queen has is that when she faces great difficulty, she has the capacity to be a stoic. She puts her head down, she plows on, she knows whatever the problems are, she will come through the other end of that. Where did she get that resilience? Oh, I think it is part of the training for monarchy. I mean, self-evidently, you, you need to be very selfless. You need to have a great uh, understanding of the way your nation works and the way people think and act in order to be a successful monarchy. And you need a great capacity to discharge your obligations and your duty. And the Queen had a remarkable sense of duty all her life. As a young lady, she pledged in a radio broadcast that I think from memory she made from South Africa uh, when she was uh, very young, uh, to pledge the whole of her life to the service of her nation. You describe her as a stoic, certainly publicly, but personally, was she emotional? Was she warm? Was she funny? Oh, gosh, she was very funny, yes. The conversations with her weren't starchy, dull, boring. They were very lively. You, you were talking to someone with a, a lively inter intellect. No, no, she was, she was fun to be with. And what do you think was the essence of her leadership style? The great thing the Queen left our country with was her example. It is difficult to find a public figure so dedicated to her duty and her responsibilities and her obligations as the Queen has been from her early 20s when she became monarch to the age of 96. That will pass on to our new King and will pass on to our new Prince of Wales as well. As the Prime Minister said, she never retired from her duty to her country. The Queen had a special friendship with America and more than a few memorable moments with U.S. presidents. That story in 60 seconds. At times, during the reign of Queen Elizabeth, it seemed Britain and the U.S. weren't an ocean apart, but close neighbors. The Queen visited 117 countries, but met with more U.S. presidents than any other foreign head of state. Here's CBS's Major Garrett. Harry Truman was the first to host Elizabeth, then Princess, saying the royal couple, quote, captured the hearts of all of us. And so it would be for decades to come. America, a country that threw off monarchy, captivated by a monarch for the ages. Elizabeth hosted Richard Nixon inside Buckingham, visible in the background, a young Prince Charles. Later, a grand visit to the U.S. for the bicentennial. Gerald Ford and the Queen danced with elegance and ease. Another enduring image, the Queen and Ronald Reagan riding horseback at Windsor Castle. George H.W. Bush would later play host, but because no height adjustment was made at the podium, the Queen's remarks were obscured. She joked about it in an address to Congress. I do hope you can see me today from where you are. George W. Bush welcomed the Queen and nearly aged her by some 200 years. You helped our nation celebrate its bicentennial in, 17, in 1976. <laughs> Barack Obama continuing a trend where U.S. presidents have had difficulty navigating royal protocol, 
mistakenly spoke over the British national anthem. To the Queen. Donald Trump would later commit a very public gaffe, walking in front of the Queen and then stopping, forcing her to walk awkwardly around him. Last year, President Biden met the Queen for tea at Windsor Castle. Now, we could have shown you so many more touch points between the White House and Buckingham Palace, but even in the brief glimpses tonight, what emerges, Nora, is a deep relationship, personal and continuous, between this Queen and the American presidency. Alive for some 14 presidents, meeting 13 of them. Just incredible. Major Garrett, thank you. Well, coming up next, the Queen and motherhood. How the Crown complicated Elizabeth's relationships with her children. The countless people who met Queen Elizabeth were urged to call her Your Majesty, but a select few knew her as Mum. We get more on this from CBS's Roxana Saberi. She served as a monarch to millions and mother to four. Her devotion to her family and country, a model for her people. Amanda Foreman is a historian and author. Queen Elizabeth II as a mother had some unique challenges. She had to be away for many months at a time, and yet she took her duties as a mother very seriously. She was often called detached for leaving her children with nannies and sending them to boarding school. Those comparisons, I think, hurt her feelings greatly because she loved her children. That was always obvious. As her children grew, their lives often exploded on the front page of tabloids and TVs around the world. And Queen Elizabeth had to walk a very difficult line, a kind of a mediator between the public's expectations of her and, and her children and how her children were actually feeling. And it was very difficult. And by her side, her husband of 73 years, the Duke of Edinburgh. He has quite simply been my strength and stay all these years. The marriage between Queen Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh is one of the great romances of the modern age. And in the very last year of his life, because of COVID, ironically, they were able to spend much more time together. And that was really a blessing. The Queen's legacy will include leading her family and her country into a modern era. She showed that, yes, you can be a mother, you can be a wife, but you can still be a woman in a position of power and influence. And that legacy continues with eight grandchildren and 12 great-grandchildren, four of them born just last year. Nora. Roxana Saberi, thank you so much. And we'll have more on Queen Elizabeth coming up, as well as the day's other headlines, including breaking news in the legal battle over documents seized at Mar-a-Lago. Tonight, the Justice Department is appealing a federal judge's ruling to appoint a so-called special master to review documents the FBI seized from Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Earlier this week, remember, a judge approved the former president's request to have a neutral third party sift through the seized materials. Well, the DOJ argued it was unnecessary because it had already completed a review. NASA today targeted two new dates for the possible launch of Artemis 1, September 23rd and 27th. The rocket will launch an uncrewed capsule on a weeks-long journey around the moon and back. Technical problems, including a fuel leak, forced two previous attempts to be scrubbed. And we'll be right back with the lasting legacy of Her Majesty the Queen. Finally tonight, a special remembrance of the 70-year reign of a world leader. Tonight, the most spectacular image, a double rainbow over Buckingham Palace that appeared just moments before the royal family announced her passing as crowds gathered to say goodbye. The rainbow to some a sign, its long arc a reminder of her long reign and her lasting legacy not just as monarch, but as mother and grandmother, a wife of 73 years, a lover of her corgis and horses. Her greatest devotion was to the service of the Commonwealth, even in her final days, working to welcome the new prime minister, frail but smiling broadly. In her long life, she no doubt saw her fair share of tumult and triumph, but she will always be remembered for her strength on the world stage as iconic and stable as Buckingham Palace itself. And that is tonight's CBS Evening News. We'll see you tomorrow night from London. Good night.